Today on Beer TV Investigates, it's time to look at one of the lowest cost options and I think best methods of implementing a T5 LED hybrid using the LEDs you already own. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of BRS TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing, with the focus on putting them to the test, and then give away much of what we test at the end. Today we're going to take a complete look at the Aquatic Life T5 LED hybrid solution with a focus on three important factors based on coral health, visual appeal, and available features weighted in that exact order. The real goal here is always to keep healthy, visually appealing tanks, everything else is secondary. I'm going to cut right to the chase here and share. I can go back and open basically any lighting solution I want for any tank, and I've seen them all, both in action in terms of performance, but also visual appeal in the tank as well as outside the tank. And at this point in time, I would call this fixture, coupled with the Kessel LEDs, the ideal lighting solution on every front that's important to me. I think this is the first readily available solution that not only meets the gold standard of performance, which was the T5 Halide Hybrid, but actually surpasses it and the new standard to beat. I know that's a strong statement, but it's all in the data, and I think a lot of reefers are going to see the same thing. I think the coolest component of all this is most reefers won't have to go out and spend a fortune trying to upgrade to a brand new fixture. The Aquatic Life Hybrid actually doesn't come with any LEDs. It's a retro solution that allows you to use the LEDs you already own. The fixture itself is only two to three hundred bucks, which is like a tenth of the price of a full T5 LED hybrid solution. Diving right into it, we're going to look at all coral health factors with providing adequate PAR, how that PAR is distributed, and spectrum. Our focus is always on SPS and higher demand corals when evaluating PAR because almost any common reef tank lighting can provide the lower PAR required for LPS and lower light corals. That range for SPS that we're shooting for is in the 250 to 350 range and as much of the tank as possible. That range coming from our episode called How Much PAR for SPS, which dives into that question from all angles. I think we should start this off by giving underwater PAR data in a 24 inch cube using just the T5 fixture itself. We're also going to look at a single Kessel A360, an AI Prime, as well as a Radeon XR15, which all create the hybrid solution we're talking about. We're going to of course look at multiple lights on the 4 foot 120 as well. We mounted the Aquatic Life's fixture 8 inches off the top of the water and for all these use the ATI Blue Plus bulbs, then measure at a depth of 6, 12 and 18 inches deep in the tank. Starting at a depth of six inches in the tank, this is what the PAR looks like. You can immediately see the ultra flat diffuse pattern T5s are known for. Even at a depth of six inches with the two sets of bulbs spaced fairly far apart, there's virtually no meaningful hot spot with an average PAR of 161 in the center, 139 in the middle ring, and 121 on the outside edges of the tank. This is pretty awesome spread. Not surprisingly, at a depth of 12 inches, it's completely flat, even coverage with an average of 117 in the center, 113 in the middle ring, and 119 on the outside edges of the tank. That's literally an average difference of four par from the center of the tank to the edges. At the bottom of the tank, the averages are 101, 107, and 109 from center to outside edges of the tank. I think this is the perfect starting point for a hybrid solution. So starting with the lowest cost hybrid solution with a single AI Prime mounted in the center of the fixture, we have the Prime set to our AB settings we found in the AI episode because it's probably closer to what most people will run them at. You could get higher PAR numbers if you wanted to run all the channels in the Prime at max. Looking at depth of six inches, the hybrid solution is now brighter in the center than the edges, but because it's close to the PAR pocket that we're looking for, I wouldn't call it a significant hot spot. We're looking at 384 in the center, 254 in the middle ring, and 141 in the outside edges of the tank, which is pretty solid performance. Moving down to 12 inches deep in the tank, the AI lenses have distributed the light very well, and we're now looking at an average of 231 in the center, 204 in the middle ring, and 172 in the outside ring. And then moving down to the bottom at 18 inches deep, the center average is 181, middle ring 185, and the outer ring 178. Overall, I think it's pretty awesome performance and really an ideal solution for a mixed tank with both SPS and LPS corals placed in different locations. With 230 for the Aquatic Life fixture and 225 for the AI Prime, I think this might be the best option out there under 460 bucks, certainly if you already own an AI Prime LED module. Moving on and looking at the Kessel A360 set to 100% output and 50% color, we saw similar performance but with higher PAR more appropriate for an SPS dominant tank. 
Starting at depth of six inches, the average part in the center of the tank was 428, middle ring 321, and outer ring 228. At this height, all of these single points of light are gonna be somewhat brighter in the center of the tank, but the light is dispersed really well. Moving down to 12 inches deep in the tank, we see an ultra flat distribution that T5 and Kessels are known for with 269 in the center, 263 in the middle ring, and 250 on the outside edges of the tank. Then down at the bottom of the tank, at 18 inches deep, we see 226 in the center, 232 in the middle, and 231. Overall, I have to say this solution is the best I've seen at maintaining PAR levels between 250 and 350 in as much of the tank as possible for SPS, knowing full well that the cores will do just fine and acclimate to ranges slightly outside that. This particular implementation of LED T5 hybrids also brings back the plug-in-play simplicity the T5 halide hybrids were known for. Plug it in, tune the color to something you find visually appealing, and walk away. Lighting will absolutely not be a limiting factor to success with your reef tank, and you don't need to be a marine biologist to get spectrum and intensity right. For those of you looking to get maximum PAR or some of the cool features which come with the Radeon, we also looked at the XR15 Pro, also set to the AB Plus program, which is what they recommend, but you could get even higher PAR numbers if you wanted if you ran all the channels at max. So starting at depth of six inches, we're looking at an average of 503 par in the center, 422 in the middle ring, and 215 on the outside edges. So the HEI lenses are distributing the light fairly well and around the maximum par I think most people would ever consider running. At 12 inches deep, we're now looking at 303 in the center, 300 in the middle ring, and 275 in the outside edges of the tank. Nice, solid distribution of light. Same at the bottom of the tank with respective averages of 225, 249, and 264. Not quite the blanket of light some of the other options produce, but I think everyone should be really happy with this type of light distribution. Overall, I think all three of these combinations are going to produce the type of results that most reefers are after. And from a PAR perspective, I think pretty easy to select what best fits your approach to reefing. We also wanted to take a look at the results with a four foot fixture on our 120 gallon test tank with two of each light set in the same settings, starting with the T5 component alone. At the top of the tank and six inches deep, we saw an average of 194 in the center, 169 in the center ring, and 134 on the outside edges. At 12 inches deep, we saw 159, 137, and 141 respectively. And at 18 inches deep in the tank, 128, 125, and 131, so the same flat distribution that T5s are known for. In fact, I think with ratings like this, this type of fixture might be a nice option for new tank owners which have mostly LPS corals and want to add LEDs at a later point when tank desires or budgets permit. So now adding two AI primes in the mix, I think we're gonna see the same awesome mixed tank performance. This time in the center par is actually averaging 393, middle ring 278, and the outside edge is 155. They're two pretty obvious points where the LED light is emanating from, but being at the top of the tank, this is solid performance. Down at 12 inches, it's even more even distribution with averages at 289, 235, and 194. And at 18 inches deep in the tank, 224, 207, and 196, which is absolutely flat. Overall, I think some mixed tank owners are gonna to wanna to turn the LEDs down or raise the light up an inch or two to either reduce the PAR or distribute the light a bit better. But at 299 for a four foot aquatic life fixture and 450 for two AI primes, I think reefers can be hard pressed to find better solutions to light a four foot tank for a total of 750 bucks. Now looking at the Kessel solution, based off the data, I think I have to say I like the two Kessel A360s the most. The distribution of the light at the top of the tank is probably about the best you're going to get with single points of light or clusters of LEDs like this. At a depth of six inches, we're seeing 434 in the center, 332 in the middle ring, and the outside edges, 230. Really solid performance in the most difficult area of the tank to illuminate evenly. At 12 inches deep in the tank, that blanket of light ideal for SPS corals with 316 in the center, 264 in the middle ring, and 261 on the edges. Down to 18 inches deep in the tank, more the same with 234, 236, and 238. The averages here are just a total of four par different. Again, I think this is that plug and play solution for a four foot tank that a lot of reefers will be very happy and successful with. And finally, the last set of PAR numbers of the day with the dual Radeon XR15 performance coupled with the Aquatic Life T5 hybrid fixture. At a depth of six inches, we're seeing 490 PAR in the center, 395 in the middle, and 226 on the outer edges, which is pretty solid. At a depth of 12 inches, 357, 306, and 284 respectively. Down at the bottom are 18 inches deep, 278, 270, and 279. 
Overall, the XR15s are absolutely the higher par option and offers flexibility in that regard. And anyone who's adding these to the aquatic life fixture is going to be able to keep any coral they want. Light is certainly not going to be an issue. Now that we got par out of the way, we'd normally look at spectrum offering and how the light blends those spectrums together. But in this case, you can get basically any spectrum that you want through T5 bulb choices for the fixture, and it's just not an issue, and the diffused light emitted from the T5 bulbs emit a uniform spectrum, which is in most cases really well blended with other bulb types. So it's safe to assume that you can achieve almost any type of spectrum that you want in this regard. In relation to the LED modules that you add into the fixture, the spectrum offering and blending will be unique to the individual light sources you select, and you can check out the other BRS TV investigates for each of those options. That said, I will say the approach that Kessel takes by putting all the LEDs under a single lens absolutely blends all the individual LEDs into a single cohesive spectrum, which is presumably not just better for the corals, but also means that you won't see individual or separated colors shooting around the tank. So overall, there's no doubt this light can grow corals, and because of the near ideal spread, intensity, and spectrum flexibility, it's almost certainly going to achieve better results with SPS dominant tanks than most of the LED only options out there. Moving on to visual appeal and how the light makes the corals and tank look with color pop, contrast, sense of depth, shimmer, dimming, lunar lights, and physical appeal. Because right after coral health, I think the main thing we want here is for the corals and tank to look awesome. That's kind of the whole purpose of building and maintaining a reef tank in our homes. In relation to color pop, again, this is hard to judge and mainly based on the bulbs and LED options that you select but I think you'll probably be capable of creating the best color out there with the most common choices of ATI bulbs and LED options like the Kessel AI and Radeon. In terms of contrast, which is that sense of depth and lighter and brighter areas in the tank, the hybrid option with soft diffuse lighting combined with more intense single sources of light does an awesome job of creating that sense of depth in a visually interesting image. This is one of those areas where I think we may have actually surpassed the gold standard of the halide T5 hybrid because the single points of light can create a more contrasty image than the large reflectors common with most halide installs. This is the same thing with shimmer. LEDs alone are known for really intense disco or even static TV effects. However, once you add in the diffused light from T5s, it tames the shimmer and produces an effect that adds an awesome sense of movement to the tank without distracting away from the tank with a static or disco effect. I will say that Kessel's compact form factor with all the individual LEDs placed under a single lens performs close to what I would call ideal coupled with the T5 lamps in the aquatic life fixture. This is again where I think the performance actually exceeds the gold standard of the halide T5 hybrid and creates a new standard. In relation to dimming, they don't offer a dimmable ballast option yet, but I've heard they're considering it, possibly even an apex ready version, which ensures it works properly with the most popular controller out there. So if you'd like to see that happen, make sure to mention it in the comments here or on our reef to reef thread, or even shoot them an email directly. So outside of that, you can obviously dim a vast majority of the LED modules out there to create the dust to dawn effects most of us want. Same thing with the lunar lights, there aren't any installed directly on the fixture, but you can use many of the LED options like the radions to create super low lighting at night and a pleasant twinkle. In relation to the physical appeal of the fixture itself and how it looks in your room and on your tank, Due to the nature of it being a retro solution, it does have a few more cords than a standalone lighting solution, but it's a lot easier and more attractive than most of the do-it-yourself solutions. So overall, the black low-profile look will look solid in a lot of decors and add to the overall look of the tank. Lastly, looking at available features with mounting options on and off-board controllability, controller compatibility, intuitive modes, build quality, and quiet operation. Right now, it does need to be hung, meaning using either wall brackets like these from Giesman or from the ceiling. I can only hope that there'll be a leg option down the road because a lot of reefers will want to see that. The fixture allows for about seven inches of space between the two T5 banks and a few mounting plate options, so we'll accept a vast majority of the LED modules out there with the AI, Radeon, and Kessel lines, including the AP700 fitting inside the fixture. They're also working on releasing some additional end plates, which allow you to adjust the width of the fixture for the tanks, which are less deep front to back. It's just T5s with an AC power cord, so there's no real controllability other than powered or not. and doesn't include a power switch, so a timer or powered outlets on your controller will be the most common option. 
Same thing with controller compatibility, but hopefully they'll release a dimmable Apex Ready option down the road. There also isn't any intuitive mode to achieve success, but as we already discussed, there's certainly potential here to use some common lights like the Kessel as a plug and play option, or settings like the AB Plus and use today's PAR chart to adjust the lights like your Radeons to your needs. In terms of build quality, the fixture seems sturdy, and for the money, I think you get what you pay for. However, some reefers will probably not like that the bulbs are passively cooled, and there isn't a fan cooling them for ideal performance. I guess that's true, but it would add to the cost and size of the fixture. In the end, they seem to be producing pretty adequate par for the intended use, so I'm not sure how much it matters. And lastly, it doesn't make any noise at all, so how quiet it is will be based on the LEDs you choose to use with the fixture itself. Overall, I think it's pretty obvious here that I'm excited to see something like this enter the market, not just because it's likely to improve the success rates with a lot of corals and tanks, but because most of us already own LEDs and we won't have to spend a fortune to achieve this type of result. And on to the best part of today's video, we're giving away this two-foot Aquatic Life hybrid fixture in a Kessel A360 this week, so click that link that just popped up or head on over to the site, click on the Specials and Deals tab, and then free stuff to win. If you like what we're doing here, let us know with a quick thumbs up and subscribe because we release new reefing videos all week long. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.